Hey, you got 30 seconds? I'm gonna teach you Python real quick. First off, we got numbers. You can also do math. Also, there's words, and you can like split them up, and then you can put them back together again. You can use true and false, and then you can use if statements. You can put things in lists, and then you can do something to each element in the list. You can talk to users, and there's different ways to loop. Okay, now you know Python. The next thing you need to do is learn to solve problems, but that's another video. Hey, you got a minute? Let me teach you how to solve problems. I want to help you infiltrate the tech industry. Normally, they make you go to college for this, but I'm giving it to you. 60% of the time solving a problem is spent understanding and making a plan. And also, making a plan is part of understanding. Learning and practicing this process will help you when you're doing an interview, and that way you won't freak out. Largely, it's about managing anxiety and trusting yourself that if you go through the steps to understand and then you make a plan, you'll be able to write the code to execute that plan. Implementation is just translating each step of the plan. If you don't know what to do for a step of the plan, it just means you got to break it down more. Complex plans take longer. I got a class on this April 11th. If it costs too much, let me know. I love you. You might struggle reading code because you're trying to read it like it's English, but it's really a little bit more like math in that you have to read it character by character and understand each character and what it's doing and why it's doing that thing. And so you have to be able to look at it and take it apart with your eyes and not expect it to immediately make sense. But don't gloss over it if it doesn't immediately make sense. It means that you have to do close character by character reading and do in your brain substitution of like this part and that part with imagining something. And so <clears throat> if you have a hard time with that, um, it means you need to slow down. Hey, let me help you pass your text screen real quick. First, you got to read it. You probably didn't read it enough. Read it a second time. Read it again. First, we got to write a function that takes an integer. We got to print out every number. If the number is divisible by three, we print fizz. If it's divisible by five, we print buzz. If it's both, we print fizz buzz. Okay, let's make a plan. We know we gotta write a function. In the prompt, it said we needed to do something for each number. Basically, we're checking to see if it's divisible by three or five. Then we print the number fizz buzz or fizz buzz. It's not clear what we need to do next, so we need to break our plan down. It's actually three separate checks. Three and five. Three, five. Okay, now let's translate into code. Here's how to do something with every number. We're going to do number three first. You just say if num, then we use this thing called modulo, which gets us the remainder. So the remainder of three divided by the number is zero. That means it's divisible by three. And then we print fizz. Same thing for five. Now we have three and five. Let's put them together for the last check. Okay, we're done. And that's how you solve problems in technical interviews. Do you have one minute? I'll teach you an algorithm. Okay, first thing we got to build is understanding. We got to determine the hamming distance between two strings, but what does that mean? Look at the example. These strings differ on K, E, Y, S, or T, L, E, S, and that's three. Three. So we just got to count the places where it's different. Okay, let's make a plan. We already have our function signature. So basically, we're going to check each letter in the string. We're going to see if it's the same as the letter in the other place in the other string. And then just add one every time we see it doesn't match. Okay, now let's translate this into Python. We're looking at places in strings, not just each letter, so we need the index. The way that we do this in Python is for index in range of the length of the first string. Now we got to compare the letters. So we say if string 1 at index is the same as string 2 at index, then we got to add 1. Let's add a place to put it. Now we use plus equal. We add 1 and then we return that. Now we're done. You're totally right. After implementation, the next step is to review your code and to read over it. What you do is you walk through your code step by step and you evaluate, does this code actually do what I think it's going to do? I did that, but I didn't catch that it wasn't. This should be not equal to. It's really easy to make one character mistakes when you're coding, and so coders have to catch each other all the time. This guy is being really nice. Thanks, man. You're a good friend.
And when you phrase it as a question and allow for misunderstanding, that creates a great deal of psychological safety. So this is a really great way to respond. Everybody makes code mistakes, so just get ready to make a whole lot of mistakes. Hey, it's your favorite data structures and algorithms professor here with another algorithm. Today we're doing make change. First, let's understand. We got two arguments, a list of change and an amount we gotta get to. You're supposed to output a list of integer values that represent coins. It's just like when you make change as a cashier. Here's US coin denominations, 100, 25, 10, 5, and 1. Trying to get to 52 cents, 2 quarters, 2 pennies. Okay, let's make a plan. So we're going to try to add the value of each coin to the amount over and over again until we get there, starting with the largest coin. But that's not enough really for us to start, so we got to break it down more. So we need a place to store the index of the current coin, and then while we haven't covered the amount requested yet, if the coin we're on is bigger than the amount, move on. Otherwise, add the current coin to the change, and then subtract the value of the current coin from the amount. Now we translate. Use a list to keep the change. Store the current coin in a pointer. While you're still covering the amount, gotta write our if statement. Don't have to change very much. We'll access the specific coin using the pointer. Check to see if it's bigger than the amount. If it's bigger, we move on to the next coin. Otherwise, we don't. We'll add it to our change by appending the current coin and then subtracting that from the amount. Okay, we're done. This is called a greedy algorithm. It's greedy because it starts with the biggest coin first. Now you know the make change algorithm. Hey, we're gonna go over lists, sets, and dictionaries in two minutes. We got two lists. Print them. Ta-da. Here's how to get just one thing. Is it gonna print George or Zaphod? This started zero. If you want George, you gotta use zero. If you wanna get just part of a list, you use a colon and you put the two numbers. Start at, end at, but it's not inclusive. See, uninclusive. Add stuff like this. Pop grabs the first element and it removes it from the list. See, now Zephod is first. You take two lists, you make them kiss, you make them come together. Even though they are very different, they can come together as one. When they are different types, they can come together in Python and it freaks people out. I don't know. Okay, moving on. Sets are just lists where you can't have duplicates. You add instead of appending. But you can't add duplicates. It just won't do it. That's a set. You can make a set out of a list to deduplicate it. See, now it's deduplicated. Moving on to dictionaries. Lists use indexes that are numbers. Dictionaries use indexes that are strings. We call them keys. You can put anything in here, including other dictionaries or lists. But not here. Only strings and numbers and tuples. This is what it looks like printed out. It's basically JSON. So if you want to just get one thing out of a dictionary, use the key to get the value. Keys are destroyed thusly. See, now two is gone. You can put it back though. But if you try to access a key that doesn't exist, you'll get a key error. If you don't know if the key exists and you want to not throw an error, you use git. That way it'll just return none. Okay, now you know most of the data structures and algorithms you're ever gonna need in Python. Hey, do you have a minute? I'll teach you an algorithm. It's called word count. We're just counting words. Write a function called word count, take in a single argument, a string of arbitrary length, output a dictionary with a count of each occurrence of every word. We're using this Shell Silverstein poem because I like Shell Silverstein. We're gonna be using the split function. Let's write our function. Okay, we're gonna have to split up each word separately, then loop over each word, then we'll clean up the word, then we'll count it, then we'll return the count. Dictionaries make stuff like this easy. First, we gotta separate the words. Next, we loop. Uh-oh, cleaning it is a whole problem unto itself. So let's make a new function. Stage one, let's lower it. Stage two, let's just take out any of the characters that we can find that are like punctuation and stuff. Then we'll return that. Okay, now we can use it. We're gonna use our dictionary now. We'll use dot get in order to check to see if we've seen the word before. If not, we'll return zero, otherwise one, and that's what we'll put in the same spot. Then we're done. Here's what it looks like. There's one problem. Can you find it and what we need to change about the code to fix it? 
Hey, let's talk about memory in Python. Numbers get copied around, but lists don't. So when we change a number in one variable, it doesn't get propagated to the other variable. See, only B changed. But it's different with lists. Here we really only have one list and two variables that point at it. So you can see when we print both of them out, same. But if we want to change one spot, changing it in one place changes it for both lists. So when we print out one, it'll be the first. And then the second one, it's going to be 15 instead of 17. Instead of 17. We really only have the one list. Here, let me show you about dictionaries. Here we really just have the one dictionary, and so when we print this value, it's just gonna be the word value, even though we're printing a dict. All right, there we go. By the way, you can use Repolit to practice your Python. It's free. Hey, let me show you an algorithm real quick. Today we're doing validate parentheses. Return true if there's valid pairings, false if there aren't. They're valid because they balance. So if there's the same number of opens and closes, it works. But if there's extra, it's not valid. These two are not valid because they're extra. This one closes before it opens, so it doesn't make sense. Time for a plan. First, we're going to check each character. We're going to count the opens and closes. If they're not the same number, return false. Also, if we close before we open, return false. Otherwise true. Okay, now let's translate. Loop over every character. We need a counter for counting. We'll check to see if the character is a specific character. If it's open, count up. If it's closed, count down. Then we're just checking, is it the same number or not? What about our other case? We'll move it to the for loop. So if we ever go below zero, that means we closed before we opened. Now we're done. Let's build on yesterday's algorithm and make it more complicated. Let's do valid enclosures. These match. These don't work. Because of this character. It doesn't match this character. We close before we open. These don't match. These are good. These are bad. Let's make a plan. Just like our last algorithm. We're gonna check to see if it's opening or closing. But this time we have to match to the last open character. If it doesn't match, the whole thing is invalid. So if it's opening, we gotta keep track of it somewhere. Well, I'll use a stack. That way we can check to see if we closed everything that we opened. We gotta track pairings of enclosures. We're gonna need to track what's open with a stack. Let's translate. Use the dictionary to keep track of what is paired. Use a list for a stack. You know for loop. Check to see if it's a closer. If so, get the last opener out of the stack. Then check to see if it matches the enclosure. If they don't match, return false. Otherwise, check opener and put them on the stack if you find one. Then just return to see if we closed everything that we opened. Now you know how stacks work. Thanks for taking my class on Python and algorithms. Now you know Python. Next, you should learn abstract data structures and how to build web servers.